Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3's Black Ice 10.41, and we are crushing France. Now, if you're new here, please hit the subscription button, but every but everyone can hit the like button, and of course, I really love hearing from you guys. It is so helpful. Um, so if you could post a comment or whatnot below, just say hi. Okay, we want to keep most of our army moving. Battle of Newark, right. Battle of Watson over here, okay. Okay, they can help support with a cavalry regiment, elite light different for you. Meaning each other is almost basically a division itself. Without the combined arms of witnesses, but hey. Okay, here I didn't get these guys. Um they're pushing now, ready. So these guys are gonna push. Let's look at victory hexes. Well, okay. Yes, concentration of force does actually matter, but I'm also hoping velocity and occupation will matter as well. That's why I'm we're drawing several different paths to get to positions that we want to. But we're doing the initial attacks as something fairly heavy. Okay, now... Um, uh -huh. Let's... R... And put these together. And... Let's hit R and add the ace. And you need to go under the command of the float fighter. Yeah, I'm sure that sounds really weird to a German. It's supposed to sort of be, or, or Flieger Corps fighter, sorry. It's really sort of supposed to be something like um, you know, you could you're pretty badly beat up. Um, fighter command. Whatever. We're mixing our metaphors here. Okay, again, where? Okay, they're pushing towards that one, hopefully, fairly successfully. Okay, I don't think I'm going to give these guys a chance to rest. We're going to move down this way. Yeah, those guys are ready to just be the holding the line core. In Romania, we give them supplies for some money. Okay. Not that we have huge amounts of extra supplies, but we've got a little bit. You're going to support the attack. Mm. 
bad shape. You're gonna support that attack. You're in decent shape, so we're gonna push into there. And now we're gonna move you up this way instead. Move you up that way instead. I'm thinking they can double back on us. Now we're going to start moving you up that way. Well, let's make sure we have, where are they, um, these guys here. Fly supplies down to this unit. Keep them well supplied. Okay, medium armor designs advanced. All right, that's good. Now we're getting into things like the Panzer III and Panzer IV, um, effectively. Okay, um... Let's see, advanced armor designs 41, 42. Um, oh, it's uh, extra wide tracks. Automotive theory. Ah, here, there we go. Okay, well, no longer receive money for those supplies. Until you attack. So how is everyone doing this morning? At least it's morning for me here in California. Okay, you're going to support that attack. It's that armor unit that's there that the British one is really difficult. Been giving me trouble all game. Well, they're officially cut off now. And we're going to get some support from there. And you're going to at least pin them. One battle laureate. Good. Switzerland doesn't want to be as Nazi anymore? Oh my god. We've lost the Swiss. What are we going to do? Light infantry branch upgrade. Very good. That was that one. Okay, 
Okay, well... Yeah, I think we're going to go with, what are, okay, yeah, SD and Militia, um, and we're going to go with some of these guys, just because I don't think there's going to be enough occupation forces otherwise. Why is oh he's already in battle okay but but it's not doing so great. Okay, fleet, brings the Balkans, right, okay, well. Just some standard infantry divisions. Yeah. Okay. 2.2 versus 2.5. So we'll go with the engineers. Hello, Sir Toy Jet. How you doing today? And Dixon Snyder's here. How you doing as well? I do think the French should be surrendering by now. I get the idea, I very much get the idea that just taking Paris, you know, by some sort of tricky means, you know, uh, parachutes or um, one, you know, armored thrust that breaks through and gets there super fast and occupies the capital while the great bulk of the rest of, um, you know, Northern France is still in French hands, but with the Vichy formation stuff, I think by now we should be seeing Vichy happen. I'm doing very well, Toy Jet. Um, quite well. You're going to attack down that way. Conclusions after a victory. Okay, we pushed into there. No 
Okay, Von Thoma needs some help getting across the river. So Guderian will give it. Yeah, we've got a huge stack here. It's been a problem. There's all kinds of troops. We have British, we got Belgians, we got French. There's even some Dutch up here. But, you know, it's been a bit of a back and forth. Okay, these guys are much better than how to attack. Yeah, I guess they're all in. Up here in the north. We're going to support taking Nance. Okay, well. I was hoping for a fast unit to come down here. Yeah, just because I don't want to get these, I don't want to let these guys get reorganized, even for one little moment. Yeah, I have been doing a fair amount of bombing up there, but they've still been able to do, hold out pretty well. We're going to strike again into them with our units that are in better shape. They're out of supplies or yep supplies they got fuel why is Rommel having such trouble here maybe because he's not in command actually one hour until they could attack so now they could attack so they're going to attack up that way Yep, it's the 1st Armored Division that's giving us all the trouble. Not the French. Send them north to the North Sea. Oh, you mean the Dutch? Yeah. Well, I'm just afraid they might hide their country under the North Sea. They have that tendency. Okay, you got a little bit of supplies, so you're going to start moving again. Start fighting again.
this way. You're getting too large. Through to there. Yeah, you're going there. Now you can just go this one. Okay, push into here just to keep these guys. I'm getting reorganized. Hello, Arno. How you doing? I hope you can help um, Eric stream for me tomorrow. I presume he, I think he talked to you a little bit that he's going to take over my Twitch channel for the day. I hope you can help him. I'm going to, um, on either Discord or, or Steam, send you some code so you can, um, yeah, I know it's doomed, but hey. Well, you know, we're going to attack up into these guys here. Conclusions after victory. There's too many of those, like I said. Some code to um, be able to change the video description and things like that. So you can help them out. Okay, war. Okay, we're not doing it. Wow, we need 10 consumer goods. What is going on with that? I don't know. Yeah, so snow begins to fall. march up that way. Nope, we don't need to descent. Um, we prefer to lower our descent for, instead of getting the middle. Hello, Roberto. How you doing? That's true. Paratroopers in this game are relatively easy to use. Oh, I don't know that toy jet's the real problem. Okay, what more objectives should we... You are there. Okay, we want to stop these guys from counterattacking, so we're going to drive down that way. Let's have you guys push down that way. 
Now are you kind of swing around here? Living the dream. Yeah. Okay, you pushed that way. I want you to just try to push everywhere with everything to keep them off balance and preferably not run out of either fuel or supplies. Probably need to capture problems, Ruse. Yeah, um, I should use my paratroopers better. Um, most of them we used up coming up here, and I've just sort of quite honestly left them um, without proper use after that. Coming up into Norway. They were very useful there. Well, it's good they're pushing on me so hard here, though some of the units are not doing so well. Man, there's a lot of English units there. No one's doing all the damage. That might just allow me to get into... Oh, there's so many units in Amsterdam right now. Yeah, Von Bach will take over actual command of the attack, I think, now. Rage is Venomize, one of our seaports. Enraged citizens vandalize and loot one of our seaports. And it's what port here it is. Um, Bremerhaven, minus one. Okay, I don't know of a single thing like this happening in 1940. So I don't know why it's happening now. Now I get the idea. But if you're trying to stage, Germany is collapsing because it's, you know, um, uh, its descent is huge, its national unity is shattered. Yeah, okay. You know, because, you know, dream up. W what if things are going bad? Hello, Matthew. How you doing? What? Um, this is not TRE. This is Black Ice without TRE that I need to play to see these kind of events to maybe kill them in their, in their crib beforehand if you're playing with TRE. So I'm going to address some of these right here, some of my thoughts on them. Yeah, they're new because um, I haven't seen them before. I don't know whether in... Because I'm... I'm writing, this is 10.4.1. I've not updated to 2 or 3. But we just didn't want to start again, and I wasn't sure how compatible they were. Okay, so, so like I was saying, 
I could see if, you know, oh, hey, I really effed this up and something's going really wrong. And like I say, national dissent is super high and um, national unity is super low. Create, um, you know, events because that didn't happen historically. Um, and this is so much more likely to happen now if Germany's collapsing now than later in the war. And a lot of reasons go into why Germany into the latter days of the war, Germans were still, I don't know how to describe it, thinking they're going to win, um, thinking... Um, There was still a chance. I don't know. But um, and things before the fall of Paris and basically with the fall of Paris, basically very quickly the, the fall of France, um, the whole mood in Germany changes. Before then, the armies worried about another World War One. you know, that, oh, yeah, even even as they're pushing like to Dunkirk, they're worried about, oh, shit, either a counterattack's going to happen because you only see your problems, you don't see the enemy's problems, or you're going, oh, shit, it's going to any day now, any hour, it's going to um, stabilize into World War One lines, and we're going to be stuck with another attritional war. war. No, maybe we can win the attritional war, but it's going to be another one of those... So how is the public going to react to it? How how will the army deal with this? Is it prepared for the, you know, a long attritional war? You know, all these nervousness going on. That just evaporates overnight with, like I say, with the fall, combination fall of France and very quickly after that, the armistice with the French. Basically, Germany reacts and I'm, you know, it's on YouTube or at least it was years ago. I haven't looked recently, but... The victory parade in Berlin uh, that happens after that is just immense. People are relieved. The war is basically over. Oh, yeah, there's still the British, you know, with U-boats out there, and there's still some bombings. But, yeah, that's just nuisance stuff to them at that moment. So, but before then, I could see this happening if things are going badly, but we don't have conditions that are bad. Okay, so um, I don't like this. Students protest across the nation. Okay, well, the Nazis had gotten control of the education like the modern left has gotten control of the education in, at least I'm pretty sure in Britain, I know for sure in America. And so I know of only two student-based protests that I know, there's probably a few more, but I know of only two, and only one of them was in Germany proper once the war has started. Now, prior to the war started, there are not, uh, uh, there's sort of religious schools and some other stuff going on, um, but once the war starts, there is one sort of student protest going or it happens in Czechoslovakia or in Bohemia, Moravia, or Czechia, or whatever. It's not out in Slovakia. It's sort of basically Prague, maybe some other other regions. And then, of course, the White Rose um, group uh, with so Sophie Scroll and the others that were that were all ended up sh shot. And what was that like? Oh, I forget the date. Forty four or forty three or something like that. And that was just minor. And that just minor um, dissent. I'll look at the chat in a minute. Um, so again, I don't see a reason for this to happen. I just don't see the reason for this to happen. Okay. Another one. And I know I bitched about this before about coal being rated now and i was sort of called out well see here um tik very good youtuber i like his work talks about sort of about this in germany and they go see here gamer see it really did happen and it talks about um he talked in the video about it, of several things 
One, the um, shortage in steel. And two, the shortage in coal. And Germany has absolutely more than enough coal to meet all of its needs. Now, there, well, why is there a shortage of coal? And he goes into it from some of the, the work. The short answer is um, to be just mismanagement. That would be it. And TIK is a believer in um, uh, markets and markets determining um, with costs, determining um, uh, priorities for resources, basically capitalism. He is definitely a capitalist advocate, which is great. No, not knocking that. But a little bit longer answer is, it was a problem not with the coal or the steel, and the steel was mostly um, lack of coal, because coal is, or steel is basically um, iron, refined iron plus coal manufactured into steel. And he looks at it as a um, train crisis, a, a transportation crisis, not a mining crisis, not an availability crisis, but a transportation crisis. And I th think he's right. I think he has his history right. And so that there were um, problems with coal. Now, and, and stuff, because you can look at some of the stuff and going in like, um, it was either like 1941 or 1942, and this is before substantial bombings going in Germany, disrupting the, the rail system. Later in the war, we can see Allied action doing some of the stuff, including things like um, blowing up the, the, um, you know, the dams on the Ruhr, um, the dam busters raid. You know, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing it may have flooded some mines, you know. Um, so there are, you know, reasons for um, things being shortage later on. Okay, and they even talked, because so, someone brought it up because there was actually a wartime era, Find the Coal Thief, a game, a board game made in Germany. I was blaming coal thieves for it. Now, one thing that they do talk about in there at some point, and this I've talked about before, is gall lighters. You know, okay, a gall, again, for those who are new here, a gall is sort of, it would be equivalent of a province. Now, it's bigger than, at least in most cases, one of these little provinces here, um, you know, that we're seeing here. I guess it could, you know, it could be something like um, Vienna might be, you know, just a single gal that would um, be one. But there was one um, gal that was all these little provinces all around here. The, you know, the Sudetenland. And so it was a gal that was shaped like a big crescent. And um, Henlein was um, the gal lighter, at least for a little while, in charge of it, maybe most of the time. Um, as opposed to what, of course, they should have done is just simply added these two provinces to whatever gal is here, you know, sort of close things. Because managing these guys here and managing these guys over here you know that's ridiculous you know a, a sensibility thing would have been um better but um so, so the gals were were regions provinces however you want to define the word now they actually compared to what was there either in the weimar government or in the old kaiser reich makes a whole lot more sense um as in combining in um, rationalizing administrative governments because especially the Kaiser Reich, but even in the um, the Weimar government, you get really radically weird little province, provinces or whatever, or island provinces in amongst another province. You know, like these three cities are this one province, but all the countryside around them are different and or whatever. And it's just craziness. Um, so they actually had massively rationalized it. Well, the Gaus, the Gao lighters are their own little sort of dictators. Some have lots of power. 
some have, relatively speaking to other Galileans, some have limited powers. Um, and they sort of ran their fiefs. And some of the powers is based on the Alta Comrade and the old comrades you know, the new Hitler and whatnot. So there, there's different reasons for their power base. And they want to run run their show their way. Now, um, Speer, one of, because Speer has so much power, he is the person who is able to fight the Gauleiters and um, make things more rational. Uh, like just one of the the um, an example of it is I don't know something like forty two or forty three they ban horse racing in Germany because um, they need the horses for you know military needs and not frivolous horse races. Well, an Alta Comrade, and I'm sure or, or, um, Nagar Nagaro thinks I'm butchering it. But um, Christian Weber is an old comrade of Hitler, and he, though he is not, don't believe, I don't think he's a Gauleiter, but he is an SS um, higher up in Munich. And he's the one that throws the yearly Munich parties that, um, that are the big sort of beer drinking um big parties, shall we say, without going into too much more detail, of the salacious nature of them. Um, a thoroughly despicable person. Um, just because he likes to throw a good party doesn't mean he doesn't confiscate Jewish homes and other things like that, and other rather despicable SS-type things. But he also um, runs sort of the, Bra the Brown Derby, which is a race, um, horse race, and it's a big horse racing thing. So he appeals, because he's an old comrade of Hitler, he appeals for, oh, but we've got to keep the, the Munich Brown Derby going every, every, every year and keep the horses, you know, the quality of, of you know, race horses in the stables and doing this. And so Hitler makes the, an exception for Munich's Brown Derby, all the rest of the horse racing organization. Because so it's not just are you running horses around in the tracks, but are you maintaining these um, horses as race horses or are you and their breeding programs and all this stuff or are you putting them out into the fields to um, operate and you know for the needs of the army so he gets an exception that's just sort of an idea that um some of these guys could oh well we need to shut down this factory and move the equipment somewhere else that'll make more rational use oh well i'll call the Führer up and oh okay no you get to keep those those you know this stuff and it's just all these kind of petty little things okay and what they talk about is how because there's coal shortages trains are moving across germany going through a gal the the gauleiter is showing up and confiscating the coal from the train presumably with um uh, with armed force, oh no, not presumably, but with armed force, I'm presuming it's SA men that were from his gal, and literally stopping the train and unloading its coal for its local needs, so it wasn't getting to where it was going. Well, that isn't coal, uh, regional coal reserves raided by locals, in a vague sense it is. But one, you don't say any of that in this event. Two, later on, they get some of this stuff under control. Um, and even if this, um, because according to TIK, not so much in, in October 40, but more 41, 42, they're running into coal shortages. And a lot of it is because they're running trains to... to um, supply um, the Eastern Front, you know, with, with equipment and food and whatnot. If they don't have the trains running, doing other things, limited amounts of trains. When you do something like this without a particular historical reference point, and you don't have, you have, damn, we must do something about this unrest, Again, I don't see any real unrest. I mean, you know, we had more recently, and we've, we've reduced it down. Um, 
so I don't know what's triggering this. And it really wasn't unrest, it was power fiefdoms of the elite. So that's a big difference. And two, there's nothing I can do about this. By, you know, um, reinforcing the railway police, and there was railway police in, in Nazi Germany, or by um, putting somebody in charge of it, or a decision-making process, even with consequences, because one of the consequences is um, would be greater dissent because the Gauleiters are pissed off because you're overriding them. So, um, yeah, if you're going to do something like this, you need a better basis in, in reality. And two, you need to have choices to be made um, how to handle this. So that is my assessment that, yes, coal delivery was an issue, but it's delivery, not so much reserves or the amount and um, when and how it's happening. Okay, but I'm not entirely sure, but I believe the creators put these events to make the game harder for the player to make up for some of the issues surrounding the food or lack there in some cases. Oh yeah, he um and I, I um and that was if I because it's been years since I actually saw that shrinking market video. I think he's talking about their perceptions of the market as opposed to what might be reality um, going on there. Yeah, um, Roberto, I understand the idea of putting uh, that they put some of the stuff in to make it more challenging because of um, bad AI. I disagree with the philosophy. Um, one of the creators, and I like the creators, don't, don't get me wrong, but one of the creators, the main one currently, is Oh My God, and he is one of, and I consider it one of the best min-maxers out there, and he plays that way, so he is, um, you know, making a game more difficult for him. I want a game to be the most historically accurate now if there's bad ai they should fucking improve the ai now not the modders they can't at least not the um uh combat ais and what we're mostly complaining about for the difficulty they can't do that now they can like change the trading ai and some of the other ais that are going on in the game but um they can't do that but Paradox should, but of course they abandoned this game about a year or two early because they thought they were going to have Hearts of Iron 4. And, you know, they've also abandoned most recently um, Imperator Rome just when it's really starting to get good. But they've created such a bad name for it, and which I think partially they've created such a bad name for Hearts of Iron 4 for their problems. Okay, yes, we want the Cormoran. Um, Expander tank factories. Now these I understand are based entirely on um, you know, the, the ministers that I currently have. These guys, you know, what, who's, who's there, so I get that. And see, this, this is the kind of thing here. I like this. You have the choice of um, getting a bunch more supplies and getting two in descent by um, instituting um, rationing or not, and actually getting a reduction in rationing, and which is sort of what was going on in 1940. Um, at first, there, I mean, there is rationing going on, but it's not heavy-handed rationing. Um, in Britain, it's not heavy-handed rationing prior to the fall of France. They're sort of getting ready for the idea and instituting some rationing before the fall of France, just because they're thinking this is gonna be a long war and we've gotta get prepared. Um, in Britain, I don't really know what's going on in France. In Germany, they're worried again, like I was talking about before the fall of France, dissent. So Germany is doing its best to maintain civil goods. I'm not saying that there's not rationing. I just don't know in detail in 1940 before the fall of France. But um, they want to have lots of civil goods so that the people aren't getting shortages because of the war. 
after the fall of France is, hey, the war is almost over. Look, we don't need that much rationing. You know, and they couldn't come out and tell, hey, in a year, we're going to invade the Soviet Union, so we've got to get prepared, because the Soviets would hear about it. So they can't quite tell the, the people, even the higher-ups, you know, a lot of, not, and I mean, you know, I don't mean the top 20 people, I mean the the top thousand people or whatever. They can't quite that early on tell them just yet that we're going into the Soviet Union too too early or it would leak out. So we are going to even reduce our descent even more by doing that. And let's save this. And we're going to end the episode, not the live stream, but the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. And if you haven't, um, already subscribed, please do so. See you next time for even more, yes, more hearts.